U.S. President Joe Biden hosted Pacific Island leaders at the White House on Thursday, offering $810 million of assistance to the region where China is aggressively expanding its influence. The leaders signed the Declaration on U.S.-Pacific Relationship, which covers climate change, security and trade, despite initial discord among summit attendees. BOA's White House Bureau Chief Patsy Widakuswara has the report. The first U.S. Pacific Island Country Summit concluded Thursday with President Joe Biden welcoming more than a dozen of the region's leaders to the White House. They signed the Declaration on U.S. Pacific Partnership, which includes over $810 million in initiatives on climate change, sustainable fishing, pandemic recovery and trade. It's part of the administration's focus on countering China's influence in the region. Following appropriate consultations, we will recognize the Cook Islands and, and uh, Niue uh, as, as, as sovereign states. And we look forward to successfully concluding negotiations for a compact uh, free association with three of our closest uh, partners in the region the Federated States of Micronesia, the Republic of the Marshall Islands, and the Republic of Palau. The compacts of free association give the U.S. exclusive rights to maintain defense assets in these nations in exchange for funds and security guarantees. Negotiations to extend the compact with the Marshall Islands have stalled amid demands that Washington better address the economic and health impacts of U.S. nuclear testing in the area after World War II. In addition, climate change is a direct and primary risk, security risk, or RMI and Oceania, and I believe the whole world. Solomon Islands signed a security pact with Beijing in April, raising concerns about a more permanent Chinese military presence. Administration officials and observers acknowledged that Washington had not paid enough attention to the region. The most important outcomes of the summit are going to be internal to the U.S. government. In the lead-up to the summit, uh, there's the dozens of U.S. departments and agencies that have interest in the Pacific were coaxed by the White House to figure out what the Pacific Island strategy is, to understand that, that it's linked to what others across the government are doing. I think it will lead to bureaucratic changes that will elevate the role and the importance of the Pacific Islands in the U.S. bureaucracy. In July, Vice President Kamala Harris announced the establishment of two new U.S. embassies in Tonga and Kiribati. The Solomon Islands Embassy is also set to be reopened. Patsy Widahuswara, VOA News, Washington.